Hello YouTube, it's your boy J-Man back at you here. I'm posting another AmeriCorps video for my AmeriCorps series. And this video is actually going to be the top 10 reasons why most people fail out of AmeriCorps. And um, I'm going to be very precise with what I'm saying here. I usually just kind of free ball it, free ball it but now I'm actually going to just talk from a concise list of that I've personally seen and heard from my two years in AmeriCorps service from 2019 to 2023. Um, all right, so the, I'm going to go from here from number one being the most common to number 10 being the least common. All right, so number one, the most common reason that people burn out of AmeriCorps or they want to leave and just get out is because of relationships. Like, I can't tell you how many couples I've seen of people who go in and they got a boyfriend or a girlfriend back home and they miss the boyfriend or girlfriend or the partner back home cheated or they're cheating and there's arguing from the every day. And it, it, honestly, it sours the experience of the thing altogether, you know. So a lot of people that are in heavy, like long term relationships, being away for a year can definitely cause a strain. And I've seen a lot of couples or people who do have partners just leave out of America within the first week or two weeks or three weeks because of that distance um number two i'm gonna go in here and say slowness i'm gonna say because not every deployment is gonna be fast paced or super impactful some deployments are actually going to be fairly calm and mundane to the point where you really forget what you're doing and you're just going through the motions you know so you're not really thinking when you're doing shit um and because of that boredom, this slowness, people feel like they're not really doing anything. And that, I want to say, is strictly a FEMA core reaction. You do not see that reaction in traditional core. I have never met a traditional core team that's complained about something being boring or slow. But So I will make that disclaimer. Um, number three is AmeriCorps burnout. Now, this is something that was referenced to in an AmeriCorps YouTuber that I saw when I was first joining. How... Over time, when you're helping people and helping people, you become numb to different problems and issues in the community. And as a result of that numbness, that burning passionate fire inside of you to help and to, you know, make a difference in your community, it just goes away, you know. And sadly, um, once that flame is gone, if you don't have that, that strength of character to stay to what you committed, you know, um, you're not going to want to and they just leave and that's definitely I've seen a quite a bit of people actually duck out of the program because of that um, number four I'm going to say is a more unfortunate and tragic one but I'm going to say it's bullying for bullying a lot of members actually I'm wrong it, it does not happen as often as you'd think but it happens more often than it should I've met two people in both separate programs that were bullied intensely by their teammates. And in both situations, um, not that gender matters, they were both girls and they were getting bullied by other girls. And they had to leave because they just couldn't take it anymore. And AmeriCorps is really big on staying on the same team. So they will they really don't want to switch you to a new team. I'm not saying if the bullying is intense, they're not going to switch you because I've just never seen it happen. Usually um, what they'll do is they'll try to have you work past the bullying with the people that are messing with you so that you can, like, become cohesion. You know, they, they have a mindset in AmeriCorps where it's like, let's fight through the conflict and create something new as opposed to just cutting ties with the conflict and going to a new team, you know. that's They really, really try their best to keep it that way. And I can understand bullying being a big issue because I'm not even getting paid. Do you really think I'm going to stay here, work all these hours, way more than eight, by the way, for barely any money, almost for free, and get insulted? Heck no. So I understand people leaving for getting bullied. And if the weird thing is if someone's bullying you, you can't even, you can try to bully back, but you can't hit them. You can't disrespect them. You can't, in traditional, much less rules, if someone's bullying you in traditional, there's more wiggle room to what you can get away with, you know? Like, if someone hits you, not that you should, I don't advocate violence, but if someone hits you, you can push them back, hit them back, you know? You shouldn't hit anyone because you can get kicked out that way. But I'm saying in traditional, you're more, you're farther away from, like, civilization and authority, so you can get away with a little bit more, depending on your teal and how, you know, liberal they are with their job or serious. Um, so bullying is a huge one that you hear about, but AmeriCorps has really worked to squash that kind of issue over the last recent years. 
Um, but not every reason someone leaves is negative. Number five is job offers. So some people will be in AmeriCorps for a while. Like on one of my later Wave 4 videos, we had a teammate, very reliable, very good teammate. He was so good that he actually got hired by FEMA full-time while still in his FEMA Corps year of service. And he was older than all of us. I was 24, and I was the second oldest person on the team. Everyone else was like 23, same age, 24, 24. But he was 26, 20, 27, so he's much older, and he needs money, obviously. So we didn't fault him for leaving for that job offer. If anything, we were happy for him, you know. So I think that uh, that job offer people will be sad for you for leaving but they're also going to be happy for you for going because you're doing something if you're at least doing something better with your life then they they will we'll accept that you know we're not going to be sad about it because it's for a good reason um number six uh homesickness homesickness is one that i've seen one time where she was in the program for a while too. She was in AmeriCorps. Okay, so if it's a, if traditional is ten months, FEMA Corps is twelve months. She was three to four months into her traditional year, and um, she felt so homesick to the point she called her mom to visit her. And again, she it was during Thanksgiving and Christmas time, so I get it. But we were gonna go home for Christmas break anyway, because they let you go home for Christmas break in December for winter class. So. She called her mom to come see her during Thanksgiving and seeing her mom was better, but it, it, it made it like, cause she's never been away from home. So she was depressed all the time and getting very sad. And she had to call her mom to come up, which, you know, it's pretty crazy from, cause I'm older. I, I don't, I've never been homesick like that. So I don't really get like that, but I'm trying to understand, you know, um, she called her mom to come up to see her. Her mom visited her, bought her some food, hung out with us for a little bit when we were on the campus and um, that just made the problem even worse because when the mom left, now she was really, really depressed because it's like it was one thing to be away from three to four months and you're, you're missing your family. But to get like that crumb of familiarity back into your life for only like a few days and lose it again, pushed her over the edge. And she left the program literally the day two to three days later. She just couldn't deal with it. She missed her family that much. And again, that's a reason that we don't fault for. But if that's a problem for you if you can't stand being away from your loved ones for almost a year then just don't join americorps you'll save yourself the time and you'll save americorps the time and effort um number seven uh breaking the rules doing drugs uh, smoking weed um drinking if you're underage drinking on the property of the facility you know taking the van for things that you shouldn't be taking the van for uh, having sexual relations with a higher staff member. Um, those are big, huge things they'll dismiss you from the program for. You know, those are, and I mean, those are controllable. You know, and I don't understand, because this is a volunteer organization. You know, if if you can't get yourself squared away and right for just to volunteer, it really makes me question, like, how would this person be able to handle, like, a job where, you know, that's your bread, your paycheck on the line, you know, if you mess up, like, you know, how are you going to pay your bills? So I don't understand why people come into AmeriCorps just to purposely set themselves up for failure to basically be kicked out or fired from their volunteer job. You know, that I never understood it myself, but I've seen that happen. Number eight also kind of ties back into an earlier one. So earlier I mentioned slowness of the job and people will leave because they're not doing anything. That was a big problem during COVID is they just don't care anymore. Like some people, and I know I said before, like they get numb to it, AmeriCorps burnout, but some people aren't necessarily burned out from helping. They, you know, not everyone has this burning passion of service and justice. Some people, they never had it. They never wanted to have it. They join because they're bored and they don't have anything else going on with them in their lives, right? So they just did it to kill time and it pays for food for a little bit. So they were just bumming out until they could find a better thing to do. You know, a lot of people use AmeriCorps Basically, as like this mini hangout until they find something better they want to do with their lives. It's kind of messed up, in my opinion, because these people are pouring time and money and energy into you to fly you out and train you just for you to be able to just dip, you know, and say, deuces, thanks for the free housing and food. I got like a real job, you know. I, I knew a guy who, and again, I'm not judging, I'm just saying he was done with college and he was basically going to be homeless. So he found out about AmeriCorps. He joined AmeriCorps. And he basically did the program to stop him from being homeless for about six months. 
and he only had four months left of the program. But the second he found like a good job that would pay for travel and give him enough to survive week by week by, he left. Essentially, people do sometimes use AmeriCorps as like a daycare, you know, or like a temporary living situation until they can get a real job in the real world. Like they never cared about the service they can be helping, but their main purpose is themselves, which is, again, is another very selfish reason. Like, I think you're, if you tried AmeriCorps genuinely and you failed, you failed out, that's one thing. Or you didn't get the training or you just, you, you said really early on, you don't want to be a part of this or you got bullied. I can understand those. But if you're really and truly just using AmeriCorps for food and shelter for a few months just to leave, like for a job, I can understand because you need the money to pay for yourself and your family, but they don't pay you enough to live off of. You're just mooching off of the spot for others who want to help, you know? So that's the one that really pisses me off. Um, and then number nine is kind of in also on the same wavelength they just lose focus of the mission this can happen if a core member gets a really bad tl the tl you know is very studied up on the policies of the program and they use that knowledge of the policies to kind of weasel around manipulating situations pulling strings for people they like playing favoritism this happens a lot as well and then it becomes like a popularity contest like we're back in high school you know and um, situations like that, while as they are really like immature in high school, they definitely can cause people to lose sight of the mission of why they're there. And it's like, Hey, you know, they want to be popular. They want to be cool. They want to be the person on the team that everyone lead listens to. Like they want to be in charge, you know, and they'll fight tooth and nail for that spot of leadership. And in situations where they don't get that spot, they explode and they don't even want to be part of America anymore because like, they think that the point they're there for is for, again, it's very selfish, but I understand at least, at least unlike the last one, at least they have a passion for helping people, but it's the, the only issue is that that passion to help is equal to their ego, right? And they can't let that go. And because of that, they just, they, they go out of their way to make it not just harder for themselves, but harder for everyone around them because their personal goals are not being met, you know? And they lose focus of the true mission, which is to help people that need help. And they say, you know, forget it. If I can't get what I want, I don't want to be a part of this anymore anyway. And I'll help with an organization that will do what I want. And they leave. I've seen that happen. But that usually only happens to people who have been in for a considerable length of time and they've done a lot of work. People aren't going to leave early on because they lose focus with the mission because they've never even worked for the mission to know what it truly feels like yet. You know, that's more of an end term service reason people leave for it but i will say one thing about the majority of these li this list is that people are leaving after they've been in for a considerable length of time out of all the ones here i'd say the only one that i would say people leave early on is the last one i'm about to mention and the first one um number 10 this is um a huge one but it's the most uncommon one i i rarely see it but when it happens it's usually within the first month of training before you're even deployed yet it's it's uh, mental health. Um, mental health is an... Ex I'm not saying it's, it's, a, it's a good or bad. I'm saying it's important to keep. But people to quit AmeriCorps due to mental health. Because AmeriCorps has, is starting to develop some new mental health resources. But the bulk of it is not. Um, usually people are leaving before the program due to... They came in with poor mental health issues. And they never got therapy or help for it. So they go in and they bail out because they couldn't cope with the struggles. Or they go in with work with okay average mental health. But they don't upkeep it. Because you know you have to be constantly working on yourself. Focusing yourself. Centering yourself. Keeping yourself aligned. So you don't get like down or depressed when you see like really bad shit. And um, they leave. So mental health is an extreme because... People usually only quit towards the end or the beginning with it. Never in the middle. I've never seen someone leave in the middle of AmeriCorps for um, mental health. But this concludes my list of the 10 reasons why people fail out or leave the program. Um, like, share, and subscribe. I'll leave a list of this again in the description of the video. Thank you. Have a good one.